it is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to tell you what went wrong with these orchids as far as I can tell, which ones are going to be leaving the collection, and which ones I'm going to continue to try and hold on to with a different strategy. Anyway, consider this a fall cleanup. I wish it was a spring clean, but it is not. We are at the opposite end of the growing season. These orchids, well, some of these orchids are just not going to make it through my winter, so might as well clean them up now. Adding to that part of the information as to what went wrong, just in case you find yourself in a similar situation and would like to try what I did, I'll tell you what went wrong where I know what went wrong. Anyway, here we go. Starting with my Fias Tancambilia propagation attempt numero three. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not happening. I'm going to take this project as a learning curve. This one's not for me. I doubt very, very much that there are going to be future fire spike propagation attempts on this channel. You never know, never say never. But yeah, I tried to get this one to root in. It looked okay for a season. It didn't do well during the winter of 22, 23. And then I thought, well, hello, new season, new opportunities. And yeah, we didn't get very far. And even though I've been watering, trying to fertilize lightly, this is the result and I am done. So, Fias Tancavelia propagation, numero three, a failure on my part. That doesn't mean it can't work for you. I will look for the corresponding videos and link them in the description if you are interested because yes, it can be done. Next up is my Tulumnia Golden Fire, a rescue attempt from the start of the season. Lots and lots of scale issues. Back in 2022, I dropped the ball, didn't see the scale, and well, <laughs> I'm losing my Tulumnia collection, and I'm not saying it's fast and furious because it's going drip, 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 one after the other. Anyway, Golden Fire was affected as well, went into this rescue setup, and we have some progress. I'm not too... Let's say by the end of the season, uh, this is not looking good. You see that there is still scale here, but it's dead. It's all been treated. There is nothing alive on this orchid that is, well, has to do with scale. But yeah, it's very concerning that even away from everybody, this orchid continued to get scale. Now I have a viable root and I do still have a couple of weeks left. So this orchid is not going anywhere just yet, but if you don't see golden fire around anymore, now you know why. It's been a tough battle with my Tolumnias, even keeping them under my microscopic eye on the daily this season to not let scale take over. I'm losing the battle. Anyway, for now, golden fire can stay, and let's see what happens. I am not hopeful, though. <laughs> It is so kind of you to be here. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. These kinds of videos are never really, you know, that nice. There's nothing really encouraging to say here, but it's all part and parcel of what's going on on the patio, seeing as I've been documenting this now for a very long time. So if you wouldn't mind, just give this video a like anyway. And uh, yeah, I can actually grow some orchids pretty well, so subscribe to the channel even though this may be the first video you ever see on my channel. It is not all doom and gloom but we have challenges to face and <clears throat> the outcome is not always pretty. So here is another Tolumnia. Might as well stick to the theme. This is my beautiful red devil. She is gonna go. She has been trying and I've been trying to help her but you can see the result. Yes the garlic alcohol worked but it seems like in the last six weeks, this scale started to get more and more and more aggressive so that even overnight, I would wake up in the morning, I'm like going, where did you come from? You weren't there when I looked at the orchid the night before. So Red Devil is out of the collection. Very, very unfortunate. Sticking to the Tolumnias, this is my firm Dalmatian. And this one, I guess, well, it has green on it, but look, this was treated this morning with garlic alcohol, so I don't know if you can see that there's scale in there, and that's how tiny she is. She's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm gonna call it, it's history. Yes, they're still green. Yes, I still wanna fight for her, but I've been fighting for this orchid for the last, let me think, <laughs> 
26 months. <laughs> but anyway, she is not going to make it through my winters. My conditions are just not ideal for Tolumnias that are in this state of weakness. And I am not going to go through the workload of protecting something that already couldn't make it through a summer which wasn't that hot. The conditions were perfect with super high humidity. Yeah, I've done my bit and I'm really sorry, but we're going to say goodbye. This batch of dendrobium sticks in a pot in lava rock with self-watering is my dendrobium sutkinoi. She's an antelope type, likes it warm to hot, doesn't like cold feet, and I messed up because I didn't get the lecker ratio right, or even if I had gotten the LECA ratio right, the change in my conditions in the winter gave her cold feet, so I switched her to lava rock with an attempt to rescue her. Now, what I'm seeing here are similar signs to what I saw when I was growing den fowls in LECA and self-watering. Changed them to lava rock, they never recovered. My den fowls, as much as I loved them, I binned them even though there was still life in the canes left because the winters will never be warm enough. Not for this one, not for Denfels, and for that reason, Dendrobium Sutskinoi is going to be leaving the collection, a bittersweet memory, love the blooms, but it is time to call it. So, mistake in the setup, and if that wasn't a mistake, then the conditions during the cold months of the year certainly don't help this orchid, even while she is in lava rock, and during a wonderful summer, she couldn't recover. That pretty much seals the deal for me. Sticking to the theme of orchids on the way out with regards to sticks in a pot, this would be Dendrobium gyrac horn. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful orchid. You wouldn't think it looking at mine. Well, gyrac horn, much like the Sutkinoi, warm to hot <clears throat> and has the same qualities as a denfowl. Couldn't take it. The two of them pretty much match together with regards to the leka, the winter conditions, and not being able to recover throughout two summers now. So I'm going to miss this orchid, but there is no point in trying anymore. And I am certainly not schlepping these two orchids in and out during the winter months for extra light. So goodbye. Gyrac horn, it was so beautiful to grow you while I could. Let's shift the mood a little bit because now I'm going to ask you to participate in the comments, please, and give me some answers if you have answers. Whoopsie, don't tell me that all this was crooked all this time. <laughs> Okay, this is my reed stem epidendrum that I got from Mince Orchids and ADD. No, she's not leaving the collection, so there's that. She is growing a fabulous new growth. It has a different appearance from the one that she grew in my care for the first time, which bloomed for us as well. So that's looking wonderful. Forgive me, I'm not touching it because I've just touched some other orchids that may have some issues that are a little bit fungal, you know, along those lines. But I want to point out to you the look of the leaves here. This happened throughout the summer. I've been treating with garlic alcohol, I've been painting with garlic infused water, and you can see the spotting. From the spotting, the leaves then turn a weird yellow color. They don't go soft, so it's not bacterial. They just dry up and fall off prematurely, which is also happening in the back growth right here. You can see it's not normal, that this leaf is still okay, and then all the leaves in the middle here, they're gone. I'm going to keep trying with this one. What I'm trying to do here is protect the new growth, and that is getting painted with garlic-infused water every other day. And then I watch, observe, and wait, and eventually I then put some garlic alcohol on this growth. So this is my attempt at trying to make sure that this orchid stays in the collection, because I have no idea what all this nonsense is. Okay, you can say highlight anthocyanin, but the spotting is not normal. Even though you may say, well, that's dust, it is not. There's also a bumpy contour to it. Very, very strange in my opinion. Definitely not normal. Anyway, we're going to hold on to this epidendrum radicans and see what happens as the winter progresses. In the same theme of weird spotting, Here's my Patricia von Puyenbrook. Can you tell I've got mainly Tolumnias and Dendrobium struggling with maybe my conditions or what is going on? Question to you. Look at these spottings. 
I'm not gonna bring out Dendrobium hibiki because she doesn't factor in a video like this, but I had the same issues with Dendrobium hibiki. Patricia van Puyenbroek started with these weird ongoings right there, and they transmitted over to hibiki. Now with hibiki, I was radical. I cut all the leaves off and treated with garlic alcohol, quite a lot of it as well. But Patricia van Puyenbroek proves to be a little bit more stubborn. This is the new growth, the first new growth. You can see I have other new growths and the spotting is starting. It is annoying me to no end. Here is another new growth. So far it is clean. And then I've got another new growth back here and a tiny little straggler new growth down there. So what are these spots? I cannot shift them. And being a dendrobium, I cannot go into anything systemic. Otherwise, we might as well write the orchid off straight away. Dendrobiums and anything systemic, they are just not a match made in heaven. <laughs> More like a match made in hell. But what I'm going to do here, and then I'm going to sterilize my hands, is remove all the leaves that have spotting on them. And this is what happened to my epidendrum as well. Spotting starts at the back and the leaf just turns a dry, crispy, you know, it, there's nothing weak about it. It's not soggy. So bear with me because all the leaves that are spotted are coming off. It's going to make the orchid look like, again, sticks in a pot. But it's the only way I can think of at this point in time to hopefully stop the spreading. She's got plenty of fertilizer in her reservoir. So what I'm doing now, it's not garlic alcohol, it's just an insecticidal soap because <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I'm just gonna give her a little bit of a good wash. I don't know if that is spider mites. It doesn't look like it to me, but it has not shifted throughout the summer. And this orchid, along with the next one, I put at around mid-August, I thought I'm gonna burn that fungus away. As I'm assuming it is a fungus, I'm just gonna burn it away. And with that, I put them on the east side patio table, which is behind us, that gets full sun throughout the day. You can tell none of the new growths burned because of that. <laughs> it was quite the risk but I thought if I'm going to get ahead of this thing, I'm just gonna burn it away. We shall see. Now, one leaf has a little spot left right here. I shall be monitoring that because if that thing is starting to spread as well, that leaf is gonna come off as well. Anyway, for now, that is the status quo of my Patricia van Poyenbroek. Of course, she's gonna stay in the collection. We're gonna monitor and I hope that whatever it is will just not return anymore. That brings me to my Panarica Brassavole that arrived in my collection with the horrible spotting you're about to see now. And nothing I could do or have done in the past has shifted this. Okay, very yellow leaves because as mentioned, blasting it with full sun on the east patio table. Spotting, old growth, okay. I even, long time ago, tried copper. <laughs> and what I don't normally do, but I had to try it to see if it would work, at least on one leaf, is cut leaves. But you can see the affliction continued. The new growth from last year got infected, even though I've been treating and treating and treating. And behold, whoops, try that again. Behold, the new growth of this year, it's looking pretty bad. My Panarica Prismartocarpa has similar spotting, but it would appear that the spotting is isolated on leaves that are much, much older. They haven't transmitted to new leaves. This one just wouldn't shift at all. Now, I am not throwing her away yet, but you see it's a tight squeeze in the growth space. I don't want this to spread because it does spread, as you can tell. It just moves from one growth to the next. So she hasn't bloomed for us this year. She's got pretty blooms, but it's not like something I'm gonna risk the rest of my collection for because once we have to bring these warm growers inside, they're gonna be living very, very close to each other. 
But if you are a Brassavole grower, let me tell you in confidence that whatever light you're giving it, you don't have to worry about leaf burn because this orchid has been in the blistering sun in southern Spain for the last six weeks. And well, sunburn is not the issue. So those are the orchids that are going to be either leaving the collection or the headaches that I've got. If you have any idea about the spotting, dendrobiums being my biggest bane at the moment. Also because of hibiki, I don't want to lose hibiki. Give it some thought, or if you don't have to, don't hesitate, just write it into the comments. Let me know what you think and if it's even possible to shift. Meanwhile, thank you so much for being here. I enjoyed having you on the patio. Thank you so much for giving this video a like and thank you for subscribing if this is your first time on the channel. And thank you for watching. Your support watching the video to the end is much appreciated. And it also gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.